So welcome guys with another reaction with Tristan Tate and Fresh and Fit podcast uh, with the second part. We did the first part. We drop it first. We, yeah, of course. Second part is coming soon. I hope you enjoyed the first part. And it was a, a lot of history, fashion. So it was nothing about the metrics and shit like that. So it was, <laughs> it was a really interesting topic. It's better than the thing we are used to Andrew speaking about. I I like this one much more. So they speak about history, history, and they spoke about fashion, about everything in general, cars. So it's a really nice conversation and a nice podcast we are hearing here. So before we check the second part, make sure to subscribe and make sure to check the store, guys. I make a new design. I'm dropping every day. You can check it in the link in the description. You can check the store and purchase something. I'm out of this paradise. I'm talking secret paper. As a support, if you have a design in mind or words in mind, send it to me. I will make it in a design and send it to you to see how it goes. And if you like it, you purchase it also. Um, what else I have to say? I think that's all. So let's just check in. And if I have another idea, I would say it. Um, very interesting, right? Because you guys have been very... You guys called it back in fucking 2020 when the whole pandemic started, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, about COVID being a scam, the scamdemic, etc. Hell, you guys were where? In Sweden? Yeah. The whole time? It was completely day one. Day one. We went to Sweden. Day one. Yeah. Because you guys called this shit out for being bullshit. And then Russell Brand followed after the fact. Because he, I think a big reason why they went after him and you guys had lost. Because you guys were so outspoken on the on the pandemic. I could probably agree with that, yeah. Because um, he did a whole thing. I, well, I forget what nighttime show he was on. But he went up and talked about the statistics and how much money the CDC made, the was pharmaceutical real companies Mark? made. Real time with Bill Maher. Bill Maher? Was it Bill Maher? It was real yeah. Maybe it was Bill Maher. And he talked about this you know extensively you guys it's a scam bullshit f putting on a mask it's bullshit yeah. etc and then all of a sudden oh uh, these guys are over here human trafficking and grape yeah. and sexual and, and that russell bullshit. brand's a sexual predator yeah oh yeah no it, it's very weird that for some reason the people who the mainstream media think are sexual predators are right about all the issues they don't need to talk about <laughs> isn't that ironic that you know, if you talk about all the things that the government and the MSM don't want you to talk about, suddenly they think that you're a sexual predator, and they run it on the same mainstream media that they were running to run their scams. It's uh, it's cosmic. It must be a coincidence. Yeah, I don't know. Just I mean, you all know? sexual criminals must just be very well tuned in to the bullshit of the mainstream media. Maybe who knows? It's, I just find it amazing how you know. You guys are against COVID and guys being pussies, sexual, you know, bullshit coming your guys' way, right? Yeah. Then you got, you know, someone like Coach Red Pill, Gonzalo Lear, rest in peace to him, yep. calls yeah, out the bullshit w w going on in Ukraine. He was yep. there on the ground. He said it years ago when the war first broke out, Russia's winning this war, guys. Yep. They're taking your money and you're, and you're looking crazy. They're not going to win. And what happens? He ends up getting killed later on. He gets he dies yeah. tragically in a fucking Ukrainian prison, right? Yeah. Um, rest in peace to him. Uh, and he Mark spoke about this. And now Tucker Carlson goes over there and does an interview with Putin, uh, which I want to get your take on it as well. Yes. We talked about, with, about it with Andrew. Yes. Um, and we've been told, oh, you know, Russia is nothing more than a gas station. I'm economically, they're poor. These sanctions are going to destroy them, etc. But the ruble's been going up. Tucker Carlson goes over there estimating that groceries are going to be $400. They're only 100 bucks. Yes. Groceries in Russia are cheaper than in America. Yet they're being sanctioned down to the fucking ground. Yet their money's went up and, and their groceries are cheaper than ours. Yeah, so um, I guess the the next logical point is yeah. Basically, I watched that uh, also that uh, interview of Tucker Carlson Tucker with uh, Vladimir Putin. I watched it just to understand uh, what they're gonna speak about it here. How they say that is all the sanction that they had and they still flourish. So that's what really keep kept me surprising. So like how he's still winning and if uh, all the sanction again is against him. So we're gonna get it uh, to it. Also, they're gonna speak about it. I wonder what imaginary sexual crimes Tucker Carlson has committed that are going to come up. In yeah, the next yeah, yeah, he's going to be next. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be and, next. And, you know what? And he's such a good guy that lives such a clean life. But 
oh 20 years ago this girl from nowhere now says i mean if that that's how we got out, him on now, fox news this well, the, it's the boy who he cried said wolf. this not just the comments if you say the same shit about everybody who disagrees with you eventually people are going to wake up when they hit me with it people are like oh maybe he's a human trafficker i saw it people were like literally thinking that for some reason i human traffic people which doesn't make any sense Why? but uh, god knows because I, I would say what doesn't make any sense for me anyway for me i'm speaking about myself because i'm not speaking about anybody else i'm speaking about my opinion about myself it doesn't make sense to me because the guy is rich uh, he, he's a millionaire so uh, I, I didn't get it because he's already rich so why he need to do this shit it's like it doesn't come to my mind and especially when he says that when they said like uh, he says how to make tiktok money and take money from them it's like it didn't make sense to me because the guy is already having money so they, he doesn't need tiktok money that's all the thing that because they believe what the news tells them and that's it keep in mind i still have if you have anything on your criminal record anyone listening any of my haters any of my detractors if you have anything on your criminal record i am less of a criminal than you i have a clean criminal record in every country in the world still to this day there you go and i'm labeled a human the only crime that you you commit is cock blocking me because girls cry over you and then fucking human taxing yeah. Holy Holy taxing taxing yeah Holy man in this country <laughs> like fucking this guy's over here sending girls in taxis and everything else <laughs> like that that he's trying to get them out the fucking house. exactly yeah yeah. But, um, yeah, Tucker Carlson, it'll be very interesting if they try that on him because surely that's got to be the final straw. Yeah, because I saw Tucker Carlson after that video, after that uh, interview, they start saying like, oh, uh, especially all the media in, uh, in America, they start saying like, he's not real journalist. Even though he was a, he's a real journalist and he was working for Fox News, they say he's not a real journalist and they say like... Uh, and they make a bunch of nonsense like yeah, they speak about Tucker. And I really like Tucker anyway. He speak. Uh, he went to also speak about the, uh, with the Argentinian president, and he um, he speak with a lot of uh, famous people. So I don't know why they didn't don't like him when he, especially when he interviewed Vladimir Putin. Everyone was against him. They said we need to ask him more fair questions and stuff like that. And no one uh, could interview except him. Anyway, we're gonna see what's gonna happen anyway. Surely, if this girl anonymous from 15 years ago said Tucker Carlson touched her butthole in a fucking bathroom somewhere that she doesn't Fox remember, somewhere. surely everyone should just wake up and go, nah, that's bullshit. Yeah, but they, but yeah. they won't. They won't. They'll be like, oh, look, we caught another sexual predator, the people on the far left. They, they will actually think that. Which is ironic because it's the people on the fucking far left who are the pedophiles and the weirdos and the yes. journalists. It's, it's them. The culprits. It's them. Yeah, they're, they're trying to point the finger at everyone else. It's like, those are the bad ones. What was, what was that mainstream news media that their guy touches kids again? That was the, that was the BBC. They had Jimmy, BBC, Jimmy, Jimmy Savile was the biggest one. But even recently, they had the same news presenter. His name was Hugh Edwards, the same old man who sat there saying, oh, the tapes were arrested for human trafficking. I've got the article. The same dude, a few months later, was uh, sending naked pictures to a 17-year-old boy. He's married, a 17-year-old boy. Fucking and crazy. people be like, oh, well, that's past the age of consent. No. The forcing people under 18 to consume pornography is exactly the same as shooting pornography with people who are under yeah. the age of pornography is 18 for a reason yeah if you are sending pictures of your bare naked pale white ass to 17 year old yeah that is sending pornography to a minor yeah. it is in fact a crime yep. they covered that in the news not the bbc they covered that on some of the news stations for all of one day yeah one day and you edwards is just chilling no criminal charges no nothing no. and he did in fact verifiably absolutely Absolutely break the law he could have had a relationship with this boy he could have slept with him etc but the fact that he sent pornography means he did in fact violate the law and there's no charges against him because he's one of the team England had another guy what was his name his name slips on my mind the ITV presenter um, Philip Schofield was his name now Philip Schofield oh, yeah was meeting some boy who was like 14 ended up getting him a job at the TV up. station and uh, yeah Philip Schofield was like fucking this this kid behind his wife's back but now that the kids like 20 and isn't trying to press charges they just got rid of the philip schofield situation and that. Right. yeah absolutely wasn't he on the news as well exactly like, kind of yeah a different a different british news channel so these same people who who will drag your name through the mud when they get the orders to and say the words human trafficker next to your name as many times as they are ordered to are the fucking pedophiles and the rapists and the, and the perverts and damn selves these are the people uh, the, whose name? I, I, like I didn't read the whole Epstein's client list. I, I tell you, I tell you two names that weren't fucking on it: Andrew and Tristan Tate. And you know what? Russell Brand's name wasn't fucking on it either. That's true. None of our names were on the world's most famous or list Vince of McMahon. people. Yeah, or Vince McMahon, <laughs> the world's most famous list of people who are predators. Yeah. My name didn't fucking appear on it. 
Like these, you know, are, these are the dangerous people. And I want to ask you this because you know, obviously, we all saw the BBC interview with your brother, right? I didn't even want to bother Andrew with interview. that bullshit. Yeah, BBC. it was a fucking planned, you know, attack. Yeah. So you were probably there. You were there watching. So what? What were you doing during that interview? What was your process? And what, what was your mindset like watching it unfold there? Because obviously they told you guys, hey, because I know they had been bothering him when you For guys were time. inside. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna give you a fair interview. We want to get your side. Blah blah blah. We're gonna be impartial, etc. And then they come and they pull that shit off. What was it like? Setting it up, you being there, because I know you're always by your brother's yeah. side. What, what was that experience? Well, like? I was laughing through the whole thing because I knew exactly. how it was going to come across and we we made provisions for this they didn't get an edited version of the interview out we filmed the entire thing and yes. released it before they got back to their hotel yes. we released our damn cells before we got back to the hotel so essentially but i just it kind of made me sad that andrew obviously is he's hard to kill and he's prepared for any situation but if you think about what a cheap shot it was imagine someone in a ufc fight got rocked and knocked out and the referee said okay stop and then the guy came and smashed his face in some more. That was the equivalent of how cheap the shot was. Because we are British citizens above anything else. I paid my British taxes for years. That funds the fucking BBC, by the way. I paid millions of dollars in taxes in England uh, back when I used to live there. I paid, I paid a lot of money in British taxes, which funds the entire organization. The fact that uh, two British citizens and American citizens were stripped of their passports and held without charge for three months in the worst prison conditions Europe has to offer. And when you get out as the BBC, the journalist, the, the center of all journalists, for these men's home country and you think okay let's fuck him his first interview let's fuck him let's ask him a bunch of stupid questions about old posts he made six seven years ago and try and make him look bad yeah not what was jail like why were you in jail why aren't there charges why has there been no trial none of these questions i was like i hate to think that people in this world are that evil because there are people who wouldn't have been able to handle it as well as andrew there are people who would have come out of our situation mentally broken yeah they didn't give a fuck and they thought yeah now, now's our time days to get him. after now's our time to get him yeah and i was like wow these people are actually and you invited them to your home these people are actually fucked up and they begged for an interview for they months. begged these people are actually fucked up and she came across very poorly she is a a, a stone cold loser of a journalist now <laughs> no matter what she posts like people just don't listen to her anymore or believe her anymore and and i don't know i think just people are just evil like if i invite you into my home at least like ask me normal questions the fact yeah. that she didn't even like the, the gall to just go in there and like not even how are you like tell us yeah. what's you know like no humanity whatsoever it was like let's sh let's just try to get a gotcha moment it's why it's really why i hate entertainment so much it's and philip fucking crazy and philip schofield who we talked about earlier did a bbc interview he was after uh, yeah and it was so well and the first question was so philip how do you feel how do you feel that's crazy oh bro. well it's bad for my wife and my kids if it wasn't for my daughter i'd have killed myself by now oh we sympathize you're yeah. a fucking predator yeah facts. you are a fucking predator and you know the worst thing i fucking you you could call me any name you like i I fucking I have I have a door. I fucking hate human traffickers. In jail, everyone know I was set up. I have, I have street cred. People in jail respected me. But when they were like, oh, this guy's in for murder, this guy's in for this, this guy's in for fucking, I don't know, running a human trafficking ring and pimping out girls. I don't want to fucking talk to those people. They disgust me. Yeah. Human trafficker is probably the worst thing you can almost be called. It's yeah. true. Because I wouldn't want to talk to somebody who was ever convicted of human trafficking. Which I haven't been, by the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know people yeah. are trying to say. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, uh, so you so you were sitting there on the sidelines, mm -hmm. yeah. watching the. Interview. I was smiling. You were smiling I the whole smiling. time because you saw it coming. I knew. I, I was smiling. I saw Bailey filming his uh, filming the interview. I knew we had it. Shout out to Bailey. I, uh, yeah, shout out to Bailey. I knew we had him, and I was like, oh, they're trying this again. This isn't the first time. Andrew has been on the internet for over 10 years. Yeah, he said a bunch of things. Oh, if a girl attacked me with a machete, I'd pull the machete out and slap her in the face and be like, and so they cut the bit at the end. Of course. They cut the bit at the end. Not, not what would, oh, what would you do if the girl attacked you? They cut all that bit out and be like, oh, you said that you'd attack a girl with a machete. Yeah great that's why i have no criminal record and uh, oh yeah have you seen my alleged victims with those massive
massive machete scars on their face. Uh, no, you haven't. That's because it's a fucking joke. Yeah. Clearly, it's a joke. And interviewers have brought this up again and again. Especially and again. with the old Tate speech show uh, yeah. videos, right? They're like a minute, two minute long, and it was all a satire. It was it, funny yeah, shit. Exactly. Hilar so, yeah. Hilarious shit. I never. I never. One was the nails one. Get your nails done, bitch. Yeah, exactly. Get your nails done. Yeah. yeah. So, no, me and Andrew have never attacked anyone with a machete. So, it's a very easy question to deflect. It's clearly just them being clowns. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I was smiling the whole time. But I thought, what about a man who maybe isn't as mentally prepared as Andrew? Trying to... Let's That's say, hard. I don't, I don't know Russell Brand. He, he seems Anyone like, else would flip, yeah, dude. He seems like yeah. a very mentally strong person. But let's say so we threw him in jail for three months for no reason. Away from his kids, away from his family. Romania jail. Journeys. Yeah. You're in court, you don't and, understand what the fuck yeah, they're saying. Then you get him out. And then you fucking go and try and broadside him with some cheap shot. Like, that's yeah. just horrible. Yeah. That's just horrible. What evil people. But I don't give a shit. I'm hard to kill. A man's down I don't care. And, and she's yeah. been trying to get an interview with you guys, like, after the fact, right? Yeah, I mean. Still, she stayed here for months and everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, of course. Weirdo chick. Yeah, following me to court and stuff. And that's why I kind of respect journalists like Piers Morgan. And not everyone is a fan of Piers Morgan. But when oh. he says to me. Yeah, I, I do. I know that a lot of people are not uh, because of uh, what is going on here right away and Pierce Morgan go direct. It's, it's, it's his job to go to be in the opposite. No matter where your situation we're talking in, he's going to be all the time in the opposite side. That's how he debate. He, it's not important. It doesn't matter to him. It's not, and I really like Pierce Morgan because he's he, he trigger you and he, he tr trigger you. It's like he, I would say the word like, um, I forget it, like... I really forget the word how to say it. If it came to my mind, I would say it. I really forget it. He, he says before the interview, yeah, you know what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to stab you in the chest, not in the back. I'm going to ask you all the difficult questions. I'm going to ask you about your case. I'm going to ask you. And you're like, yeah, okay. And you're ready for what he's going to say. Piers Morgan doesn't lie. Piers Morgan doesn't come under false pretenses. That's one say, thing I do respect oh, about him. Guys, you, su you suffered you. in jail. I'm going to ask about the jail experience and start asking, oh, your case file says this. You're accused of this. No, he, he is who he says he is. And I don't agree with a lot of the shit he says, but at least he'll fucking come from an honest angle, which is why interviews with him are, are exciting. I did a very good interview with him. Andrew did a very good interview with him. Yeah. Nothing against Piers Morgan. I watched both. Yeah, because he didn't fucking lie. He yeah. Just, he, he, he straight up. Yeah, he asked what he was going to ask. So, being straight up as well, um, this has been going on for a little bit here on our podcast, and I think for most people, they see you as a, per a good person, you're a good guy, but they have an issue with your life, because you're so perfect, things must be wrong. Okay. On some level, there's Go on. cracking what, armor, chicken what's, armor. What's, what's wrong with my life? So, they accuse you okay. of having a baby mother yep. that you made the OnlyFans for money. And we talk about it on our podcast as well. Yeah. Obviously, we defend you because obviously speaking, we know you very well. But these idiots online like to think they know us better than we know ourselves. Yeah, so I, I can actually touch on this very, very, very briefly. Yeah. I am worth so much fucking money. Yeah. So much money. If any girl ever got pregnant with a child of mine, she'd never have to work another day in her life. And I'm she's an OnlyFans girl or a waitress, etc., etc. Now, everyone knows I used to run a webcamming website. Everyone knows I ran this webcamming website, this streaming company, which, by the way, is not linked to my criminal case at all. At all. And I ran this for years and years and years and years. I made very, I made lots of good friends, uh, both male and female, in that industry. I still have a lot of good friends within that industry now. And people, when they see me out in public or something, I don't want to talk too much detail about. Yeah. about my actual life but people will be like oh you're with a girl who does only fans i'm like yeah well she used to work for my company for five or six years and the fact that the fact that that's used as an attack angle on me i'm perfectly fine with because that was very much a part of my life however if i get someone pregnant they're not going to work any single job ever again for the rest of their life i'm going to take care of them they take different events in history and mix them together to write some false narrative or some false story or as though every girl i date <laughs> the webcam model or as every girl i date is an only fans chick there was this porn star who went on and you um, met her before that also oh uh, yeah exactly, very important yeah. for them to know it was well not like she I, was I, met doing that yeah, I met that girl when she was, she was, she was, she was she was working in a bathroom store selling toilets and baths. Anyway, long story short, people are very happy to look at very small aspects of my life and try to broaden it and say that's how I conduct my business. There was a porn star who recently went on the Adam 22 podcast. Her name was CJ Miles. Yeah. Asian chick. Yeah, so little Asian chick. Now she's a porn actress. So she's on this uh, podcast, and she's sitting there saying, yeah, I met Tristan on a dating app, and he was in Dubai, and uh, yeah, I flew out to see him, and we hooked up, and we hung out, and yeah, Tristan was, uh, you know, rough with me in bed, and it was fun, and gave me this kind of good review, I guess. <laughs> and everyone's like, Tristan's having sex with porn stars, Tristan's having sex with porn stars. One, 
Do I have sex with porn stars? None of your fucking business. <laughs> Two, I'm not trying to marry the bitch. Yeah. Three, she wasn't a porn star at the time. She was just a hot girl with a hot Instagram. Uh -huh. yeah. She didn't start shooting adult content until about a year after I'd hooked up with her in Dubai all those years ago. There you go. But people will take a tiny little as aspect of my life, one little interview, one word someone says, collaborate a bunch of stupid facts. And by the way, I saw that girl for two days of my life. Two days. Ever. I've never seen her again, never saw her afterwards. It was a very fun weekend. I'll be honest. It was a very <laughs> it was a very fun weekend. Uh -huh. And it is what it is. But people who are looking to criticize, when I say, Oh, if you want a good girl who's a uh, virgin to start a family with what motherfucker you think I don't have virgins you think I don't have virgin <laughs> girlfriends are you out of your fucking mind mm -hmm. you know so it, it's it's just people trying to look at something and criticize it in one way or another. we don't want to hear no more dick watching because that's just gay as fuck me writing at all with the Tate Brothers or us. So if you don't know the full story, don't, don't, don't talk about it, bro. Yeah, so man. And, and my life has he been had a cam business back then. She wasn't yeah. doing it before. He yeah. met her. She got into it after the fact because mm -hmm. he was running a cam business. And then she loved him because she worked for him. Yeah. And just you know. I, I closed the cam business down yeah. uh, years ago. What was I going to do with her? Kick her to the streets? Yeah. I'm, I'm a good guy. So, yeah. you know, my life is, has been very long and very complicated. And there's been very many chapters to my life. And you know what? I will defend right now mm -hmm. on your podcast. I'll defend dating only fans girls give me a second okay give me a second right, go okay. on. Hear me out let's hear, right, let's hear another side no, go I'm, I'm gonna defend this for half a second because when people say only fans what you have to understand is there's a sliding fucking scale with only fans yeah. there's a massive sliding scale yeah i know girls who are actual runway models who have an only fans account and sell implied nude photos that's it mm -hmm. the same kind of stuff girls post on instagram and that's it when you say I'm dating this girl and she does only I believe the only fan was uh, created in the original to to sell other things not but I don't think it was only fan created for nudes it become later because a lot of people start using it as a nude it become that brand like uh, everything is nude there but I will for now now it's only fan is a brand for nude so no matter what you're gonna say I'm, I'm gonna disagree on only fan like because it's it's the easy way and uh, I don't like anything about it on Instagram and that's it when you say I'm dating this girl and she does OnlyFans when people say that to me my first question is well what does she do mm -hmm. what does she do on OnlyFans is she sucking strangers dicks in bathrooms and selling videos of cum shots on her face mm -hmm. I have never ever <laughs> taken a woman seriously who's ever shot any boy girl content ever ever that's mm -hmm. never happened mm -hmm. so when people will be like oh well this girl got her tits out I'm like yeah you know Halle Berry Carmen Electra Pamela Anderson these were girls who were getting their tits out in Playboy magazine way before OnlyFans existed mm -hmm. and no one ever said um who was that guy who was dating Pamela Anderson the Tom Tommy Lee Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee. no one ever went Pff. Tommy Lee, what a fucking simp. She had her tits out and people saw him. There's, there are sliding scales to what the OnlyFans business is. There are some girls who do implied nude foes. There are some girls who are just naked by themselves showing their tits. And there are some girls who I would never date, by the way, and I would never take seriously, and I would never do anything more than just hook up with, who literally shoot like fuck videos. So it's a massive sliding scale. So there are dudes out there, and I don't know because I don't subscribe to any of their accounts, but when they're like, oh, this girl's dating an OnlyFans girl, my first question in my mind is, well, what is she doing on OnlyFans? Because mm -hmm. some girls do OnlyFans. Fans that don't even get fucking naked. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what is she actually doing and what is she actually selling? What's her fucking body count? Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask that question? Because that's more important. Mm -hmm. You give me a girl who's sold pictures of her tits with a body count of one and a girl who no one has ever seen her tits, but she's a body count of 20. And I'd rather take the girl with a body count of one personally. And I understand that some people may have varying viewpoints to that. Mm -hmm. However, the fact that only one dude has ever physically touched her to me is better <laughs> then I don't really give a shit that a bunch of dudes have seen her tits. That's not important to me. And mm. there's no girl in my life who anyone could ever tie me with besides maybe just hooking up with them or a girl who said that she's been with me who shoots actual pornography, boy, girl, actual sex stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, so OnlyFans, it's a, it's a sliding scale. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I would say, so also, like, from your experience, right, like, you've had girls that worked for you in the cam business, etc., yeah. that were virgins, right? And they I had just... One, I had one. That was a famous story. Yeah, I had yeah. one. Yeah. It, it wasn't all of them, but there was one girl who worked for me for years didn't sleep with me didn't sleep with my brother she was a virgin that was her whole thing she made loads of money she literally used to get naked mm -hmm. and that was it wouldn't touch herself wouldn't do anything and yeah the the cam business is, is is unusual but that girl was a virgin yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i think she's married now yeah so her husband married a virgin with a body count of zero 
Oh, I, gu- I guess good for him. She never hooked up with y'all. No, never. Wow. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know it. You know I tried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, yeah, and at the end of the day, man, there's always exceptions to the rule. I've always said it, you know, that, uh, you know, certain guys can do certain things and other guys can't. And for the majority of you guys, you probably shouldn't commit to a girl that does OnlyFans. But obviously, Tristan is very good with women and I understands got, how got, women are and comes from this industry from and he's industry, able yeah. to he's able to you know detect a girl that okay she does this type of stuff she does that type of stuff but for the majority of y'all man probably better off not stay not yeah. and, 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 and I will actually finish yeah. my because a lot of you guys I'm are not good, Tristan good. Tate and have the background and, and, that he and has and I, will, I will finish on one point I will finish yeah please go ahead to all the guys out there who dream of having the, uh, let's say, I don't know what their dream is. Maybe their dream is some Russian ballerina with a body count of one. Maybe their dream is some model with a body count. Okay, for me, this kind of topic are really not interesting to me at all. I don't like this kind of topic, the body count, women, uh, this is not, uh, you know, what I believe as a Muslim and an Islamic religion, just get married, have children, have family, and uh, work uh, to provide for your family and provide to uh, try to be rich as far as much as you can rich as possible so that's what i believe so all this can b- body count and uh, like women how to at- attract women and that's all garbage for me we have no issue in algeria with this kind of shit so it's not important for me i don't care about it let's move on count zero whatever dream woman they are thinking that they're having and they're trying to label me as this and that and the other one because i hooked up with cj miles or whatever their criticisms are motherfucker you think i don't have those girls you think i don't have the girls with body counts of zeros and ones you think i don't meet these chicks like in what universe do i not get these chicks yeah yeah, so all the girls you're dreaming about i can get and it's fine so that's the other thing too i kind of had to fucking let these guys know like you have girls in like sections like there's main girls there's baby mamas there's side chicks there's fun girls the well, old me. Yeah, no, I old you. Sorry. He's changed now. <laughs> I'm a changed but, man. But so. can, can I say this, though? As men, right? We call, we well, y'all are not Tristan Tate. We tell so, guys yeah. to become better for yourself. Yeah. But why is that? To make money, to be a provider for yourself and your family. But what's the main goal here? So you can make your own choices as a man. Yeah. So ultimately, if I decide I work my ass off, I become successful, I'm at this hierarchy of a, of a level where I want to be, guess what I'm going to do? What the fuck I want to do? Yeah. Buy, so buy, buy a house if I want to fuck mom. strippers or prostitutes, yeah. hey, that's yeah. on me. No, <laughs> granted, do I agree with it? No. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't hire prostitutes. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I don't fuck strippers. But yeah. the, the CJ Miles thing was a big one because someone's like, "Oh, Tristan flew some porn star." She was just some hot girl from Instagram. Yeah. Like she wasn't shooting adult content, or I probably wouldn't have met her back then. I, but I, it's I, interesting I, how they I'll automatically assume you fucked a porn star, but yeah. when you smashed her, she wasn't a porn star yet. Yeah. But I've also smashed probably 20 porn stars. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They're, yeah. Not, they're not in my life. And we're not, yeah. we're not paying for, for smashing, yeah. man. They're not in my life. They're, yeah. not, they're not living in my house. It just is what it is. It's fun, know? bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, I guess guys can't get and over I, that sometimes. And I, I said this on the, the fresh, on the Fresh and Fit podcast I did with Andrew. I said, look, every woman's got her own different use case. There are women who you should be having families with and you should be marrying. And there are women who are, but let's say they're active porn stars. And they're, I don't know, just over at, in the club. Recreational use and, only. And they look good. Recreational use only. That's what they're for. You don't have to take the porn star from the club and say, you need to be a traditional woman. You need to do yeah. this. You can actually just wrap up, have a great time with her, yep. and then just delete her number after. And you can't. You can <laughs> do that yeah. she's fine you're fine everyone's happy and no one gives a fuck i'll give yeah. you an example we were in new york a couple of years ago for some podcasts right i met this chick she does uh porn super cool girl we hung out in new york you know we, you were a friend whatever oh yeah yeah and uh we had a good time you know hotel stuff had some fun i left i did a vlog showed a little bit of it in there and then they said oh fresh spray for pussy and i'm like hold on I don't know what you charge niggas outside of me. Why they pay shit? I had a fun night, yeah. and that was it. You know, but because oh, fresh put this uh, 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 a porn star girl. He must be a hypocrite. I'm like, bro. I had a fun night, and that was it. Same thing happened to me four years ago. I threw a pool party at my house about four years back. Mm. And um, I invite a bunch of chicks from Romania. You know what it's like when I when I do a bit of a wrangle. And I oh was, man! So, so it's all oh, these man. all these hot girls can't wait up. to do one when they're yeah. just all done. <laughs> <laughs> so all these hot girls turned up at my pool party these, this four years ago, mm. and some haters from Romania started messaging me. Ha ha ha! You you brought escorts to you to your party. You hired escorts to come to your party. I'm like, what? Who? And they sent me some girl who, by the way, I didn't even talk to the whole night. Mm-hmm. Never spoke to her. Never even slept with her. And they sent me some escort adverts for some girl who had turned up at my party. I'm Speaking like, of which, we could discuss that other girl that showed up at your party. Remember that they tried to say some bullshit about? Which one? The one. We were talking about it yesterday. If you don't remember, don't worry about I it. I actually don't remember. But anyway, yeah. my, I was just like, the dad said some bullshit. 
She showed up at the party. Oh, no, no. Let's, let's, let's talk about yeah, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Continue on. Sorry. So anyway, I was just like, what? You think I paid her to show up at my party? You think when the, the, the one of the richest, <laughs> most famous men in town throws a pool party, she says, okay, I'm going to message him and give him a price? <laughs> no, she might escort in her fucking free time. I don't know what the fuck she's doing. Yeah. I never even slept with this chick. But people saw her and identified her. I'm like... You know, the fact that you know she's an escort says a lot more about you than me. Facts. Yeah, yeah same with, like, Romanian porn actresses. There was a photo of me sitting at a party, and there was a girl near me, and she was like, oh, that looks like this girl. She's a porn girl, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, the fact that you know that <laughs> says more about you yeah, than me, bro. Yeah, that yeah. Is I was just having a party. My clothes were on the whole time. I was sitting around <laughs> having drinks with a bunch of people I know. Mm. Like, shut the fuck up. They're analyzing the people that go to your party more than anything, which yeah. is fucking weird, man. And, and a lot. And here's the thing. Yeah, because I've been to one of these parties before, a few. Uh, a lot of the girls don't even get talked to, man. They don't even get talked yeah. to. Yeah, no. Like, yo, there's a ratio of like, yeah, I'm outnumbered. Five, six, seven guys maybe, and then like 40, 50 girls. A lot of them don't even get talked I to. Just, guys. I just need and, girls around to drink the champagne. Newsflash: Those girls that are in that lane of work are more fun. I mean, the other girls want to have fun too. So it's like, if you don't don't know how it works, you're gonna judge it like, oh, she's this and that, bro. It's a better environment for fun. That's it. So I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of guys are just—they're not around women a lot, so they don't get it, and they—it's just, uh, man. You, it's trying to explain this shit to people a lot of the times is fucking annoying, but yeah. they don't—they don't get it. Yeah. Um, shit. What was like? Uh, BBC. Uh, oh, Vice. Vice. Fucking yeah, yeah Vice. I was no, thinking no, about it before. I yeah, forget the word. Yeah, Vice. Yeah, 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 he did an interview in Vice. The chocolate stunt, man. Chocolate, man. Hilarious. Who came up with that idea? Um. You know what? It, it was actually just done very lightheartedly because he was. Because in my head, I'm like, Trista came up with this idea. Yeah, well, here's the thing. <laughs> when I saw that show, I was like, man, this is Trista. You know, 100%. I, I don't operate in the world of trying to get revenge on anyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't think, oh, Matt Shea talked a bunch of shit, made up some fake anonymous play. I don't know why. I didn't even watch his original documentary, did, but it was actually done in very good spirits. He came to the event. All these dudes had this cage fighting event. It was very cool. We did our own video on it. Everybody had overwhelmingly positive reviews. Yeah. And he tried to spin it in some negative way. Yeah, so, good time himself yeah and no, he said like he I, I, I had a great time and, and to and to be fair last thing i ever said to him in conversation i said look i'm proud of you bro i think you did really well you know blah blah, blah. i made everyone give him a round of applause and he walked off with a big smile on his face but he's just a snake isn't he so it wasn't something it was where a snake. i thought i need to get matt shea back i don't give a fuck who matt shea who gives a shit about this <laughs> dork like nobody like he's literally on his little interviews doing cocaine because he's scared of the people he's with he's a weirdo oh. so anyway <laughs> so this dork uh, it was just the opportunity arose. He was begging. Oh, I want to come back. I want to come back for round two. I want to come back in round two. And I'll tell the real story this time. I'm like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, sure you will. So we just basically, it wasn't something we planned. It wasn't something that took a lot of effort. Did he not, still work for Vice at the time? Uh, I think he worked for the BBC. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Funnily enough. But anyway, we just said, yeah, sure. Let him come here. Just didn't open the door. And, <laughs> and it became this legendary moment. And now I feel like his career, I mean, he can't post anything. And he says, oh, they sent their army they to the fuck attack out of him, me. Dude. I don't fucking tell people yeah. to troll Matt Shea. Yeah, he trolled yeah. himself. Yeah. Literally. And everyone laughs at him now because he's a laughing stock, and that's not my problem. It is not my problem that Matt Shea made a dickhead out of himself by, one, trying to be dishonest, and people disliked that in the first place. Yeah. And then no one liked a dishonest guy. Begging for a second round as, as though he's going to get it. You know, I sat him here before he did his hit piece. I sat him next to us. I said, Andrew, this guy is going to do a hit piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is a yeah, yeah. He's he's going to do a hit piece. I actually remember when he uh, he called that. He says that this guy is a snake. Literally here, he was in this uh, in this video, in this room, and he said literally that this guy is a snake. You called it. You called like, it. Like, well, no, I actually just right yeah. fucking here. I was like, man. why are you lying? You're gonna do a hit piece, bro. Like I knew. So we all knew. He didn't trick us. But uh, I thought you're gonna keep begging for an interview. Sure, fly here on was there. Bring a box of chocolate, show up at my game, <laughs> and I'll just chill with my brother. I don't give a fuck if you turn up at my house. Fans turn up at my house all the time. He's just another one. So yeah. it wasn't a orchestrated revenge plot that I thought I'm going to get Matt with because I don't lose sleep thinking about Matt Shea in this stupid documentary. Lots of these hit pieces have been made by all sorts of dorks. Yeah. It was just, uh, yeah, the opportunity landed. So I thought, yeah, let's fucking, let's troll him. And I, me and Andrew both thought of doing it. And it was, we were advised against it by a bunch of people. Oh, well, you shouldn't do that because it makes you look like, makes me look like what? <laughs> Who the fuck is he? What's he going to do to me? <laughs> Write another article? No one reads this shit. You realize it. My PR people send me this saying, look, 
the fucking this news organization has just come out with some new news article who the fuck goes to bbc.com opens a news article and reads them <laughs> they get less hits than my Nobody. fucking bro they get, they get less, less hits than this podcast right yeah, now they, they get less tweets. hits than this yeah exactly and yeah. my tweets I ratio these people all the time yeah. yeah the BBC was just like oh well Putin lied in his interview, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, yeah, fact check. The BBC's run by satanic pedophiles and they're losers or something. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. get triple the likes they I get. I commented on so that. So th yeah. these massive news organizations don't have teeth anymore, and they're not scary anymore. So they're going to lie about you. It's really not that intimidating or not that interesting. Yeah, isn't it because crazy how mainstream now, I remember 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Now, now it's not that much harder because before it was only uh, the media, and you cannot see it except on TV. Most of us we didn't have internet. I was one of them in 2009, 2010. Uh, anyway, 2010, 2000. Before, anyway, before 20 years or something like this, it was no internet. So the only thing you can believe is in the media, and you believe everything you read in the media, so on the, the news, in TV. But now, in the internet, is accessible for everybody, no matter where you are. So everybody can learn and can think by himself. So that's why. That's why they don't like now. Uh, the internet is a positive and a negative way in the same time. But most of it is really positive. For, uh, the internet. So like so mainstream media was everything. Like yeah. if you, you know, if you're on the news, it was a big deal, etc. Now you can have your own platform. Nobody trusts the news anymore, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's Nobody, fucking so crazy. I'm saying. And they did this to themselves. Yeah. So I didn't do this. I didn't make Matt Shea untrustworthy. He's just untrustworthy. Yeah. And I believe that he fired his last bullet with Andrew. Who has he had an interview with since Andrew that has been a person of any relevance ever? Nobody. And will he ever have an interview again with anybody who's got No one trusts him, no. 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 Well, he saw what he did. The answer is no. Yeah. So you want to shoot yourself in the foot. That's not my problem. And the fact that you're a laughing stock, he actually says, he actually says, you know, when I post things, everyone attacks me and asks me for chocolates. And Andrew have told, Andrew's told his fans to do that. We don't, well, yeah. how do we, Not hi true. guys, can you please troll Matt? I don't have to fucking tell my people who hate snakes to troll Matt Shea. Yeah. Like, why the fuck would I do that? I don't care about Matt Shea. He's a fucking dork. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he shot himself in the foot. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he, he fucked himself up by doing that. Like, that whole, uh, you know, that Vice documentary. Poor and it's poor. crazy because I saw the footage of him having a good time and everything else like that. And he, you had, guys, a, he, had, a, he had a wonderful time. And, uh, man. He treated him so nice. He was very courteous. And still... He, so he, he came with an agenda and he tried to do his thing and like with Lucy Williams from the BBC it just didn't work yeah so and both yeah. of them now are disgraced journalists and it's and it's crazy because it's like you gotta be you gotta be honest man like the internet like you can't be a, it's very difficult to be a scammer in 2024 man especially now Elon's bought X and true narratives can be pushed out there. to be true to guys I will speak about this one uh, it's really hard and yeah, the, the internet now especially with for an interviewer like uh, like the BBC came I remember Lucy she did the interview and the, my, this Mike did also an interview and PBD did, uh, did an interview but PBD is not a journalist you know what I mean he's, he have a podcast but he's not a journalist he, and he asked better questions than them anyway, even, anyway he was much better prepared but for me the best in, uh, the best interview I heard it's uh, Pierce Morgan because as I said before Pierce Morgan trigger you like he he may, he engage with you even he he, um, he oppose everything you say but he engage with you he trigger you and he push you to uh, you know he push you to out of the limit and that's what I like about it. That's the real journalism, anyway. As, and he said, he said that he came through directly. He's going to ask you everything about everything. And you know what he's going to ask you. Because, as he said, he to already told you. Carlson, Tucker Carlson also was 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 also one of the great interviews that I heard um, with Andrew. But for me, I prefer with Pierce Morgan. As I'm saying, the first, uh, the sec second one? No, I heard only the first one, yeah. Yeah, you have another one with Pierce Morgan. Out of this paradise, I'm talking syncopated breathing, love every evening, one, three, six, five, dancing every night, fading in, out of feeling. Second one, I still didn't hear uh, that one, but uh, the first one I really I uh, watched it all, and Carl Tucker, uh, 
then. Yep. Yeah. And Forget. one will exist, and we can tell the truth Forget to fucking names. hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Yeah. What yeah. we talk about. You're gonna be called out. Yeah. It's interesting because if you look at the uh, Putin interview with Tucker Carlson, it's only like 14, 15 million on YouTube, but it has like hundreds of millions on Twitter yeah. on X. Yeah. Like you know, YouTube tried to suppress that interview hardcore. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, and I guarantee you, the Biden administration was probably behind that as well because they don't want people to know the truth. And oh, I didn't get to ask you. So what's your thoughts on that interview? Well, did you see? Because you're a historian yourself, you know a yeah. lot about Russian history. I mean, you know you're learning Russian right now. Oh, I am learning. You know a lot about the culture. Am, you know a lot about that, right this now. region of the world. I am learning Russian right now. My my thoughts on the interview is my whole perspective on the situation I can talk about in in depth. And what I think the Americans need to understand is this, and what people who don't know the Ukraine Russia relationship need to understand is this. I believe it was a very nasty trick for the West to make Ukrainians think exactly. that they're one of us. Because lots of countries, to get a little bit boring, there are countries like Kazakhstan, for example. Kazakhstan is a neighbor of Russia. Mm -hmm. Everyone speaks Russian in Kazakhstan. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are they're, they're, they share a big border. Mm -hmm. They know Russia's got one, one massive thing going for it, unlimited energy. So what Kazakhstan does is, okay, we are basically Russians. We're not, we're slightly different, mm -hmm. but we speak their language. Former we're Soviet Union. Yeah, we're basically, we're, we're basically Russians. So what we'll do is, and shout out to all my Kazakh friends, I know you're not actually Russians, and Kaz Kazakhs and Russians are far, far more different than Ukrainians and Russians. They say, look, we're part of this part of the world. Let's team up with our big brother next door. Yeah, let's use their good, cheap energy, and let's build this amazing country. And Kazakhstan has gone from a third world shithole to a real fucking economically powerful country in a very short period of time because they made friends with who was close to them and i feel like the greatest trick that's been pulled on ukrainian people ukrainian people who, nice. who by the way russian <laughs> is their first language most ukrainians speak russian as a first language when i yeah but for the people who doesn't believe this shit yeah i was living in ukraine and ukraine speak russia as a first language most of them doesn't speak even ukrainian especially in kiev there is only the region like when you see in Lviv near the border of Poland, they speak Ukrainian. But other than that, they speak really Russian. Some of them doesn't know even Ukrainian. I was born, Ukraine was not, and I know Ukrainians will argue about this. Oh, well, it was good. Ukraine translates in Russian to like on the edge or on the border. On the border of what? The Russian Empire. It's essentially, it's essentially a, a Russian state. And the greatest trick that's ever been pulled on Ukrainian people, especially the young ones, is for the Americans and the Canadians and the British the, and the Germans, the NATO people, to make you think as a Ukrainian, you can look in the mirror and think, yeah, I'm not Russian. I'm like the Americans. Hmm. I'm like a Frenchman. Dangle that no, NATO No, membership. you're not. Hmm. No, you are not like a Frenchman or an American or a Brit. You're not, and they will never see you as one of them. To us and to Americans, to a lot of people, you're just Russians. So team up with your big brother next door, use the cheap energy, and create the best country ever. You've got the best agricultural farmland. Yeah, there was so okay. much untapped potential in that country. Yeah. However, they were psyoped into thinking, yeah, yeah, the West, that's our people. Look at where you are on a fucking map. <laughs> you are not the West, and it was a fucking sick trick that they pulled on the Ukrainian people. And even young ukrainian people nowadays i meet who they dangled nato yeah, membership yeah. to them for oh, so long yeah well why can't we join the west look at the fucking map you're not the west you are in fact a russian state you speak russian you have great relations with it well you do used to have great relations with the russians and yeah before it was Zelensky. Yeah, who was so, it before um uh poroshenko yes and then the guy who began with why before that who pulled the coup but uh, anyway long yeah. story long story short i watched the interview i watched the tucker putin interview and i think that it was a very important Putin did two things. One, he displayed total indifference, and there is power in indifference. Yeah. Total power. Total indifference is total power. If a girl's trying to get you back and you really don't give a shit, or you're arguing with a girl and you really don't give a shit, you've never been in a more powerful position, ever. If someone's trying to do a business deal with you, if you're trying to pitch me for a business deal and I really don't give a shit about making money or doing the business deal, I have the position of total power because I'm indifferent. Yes. Putin displayed the fact that he is totally indifferent with the situation. Uh, ask your leaders. Uh, well, if you want to call me, fine, but I don't have any need to call you. I mean, like, he did, one, didn't give a shit. Two, I like the fact that he bored American audiences with these long explanations of how the kingdom of Poland, Lithuania was trying to influence, I knew this stuff already, was trying to influence the Ukrainian state to have their own national identity, when in fact they were essentially Russians the whole time. Kiev was a very important Russian city. A lot of the yeah. great Russian saints in the Orthodox Church, uh, St. Catherine of Kiev, were people who were born in modern-day Ukraine. When you watch the movie Rocky IV, they tell you Ivan Drago is a Russian, yes? 
mm -hmm. you read his stats and watch the follow-up movies, Creed and Creed Creed 2, where they have Ivan Drago in it again, he lives in modern-day Ukraine. Oh, how come when Rocky IV came out, he's Russian? Russian, 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 Russian. But nowadays, because to follow his story, he's in modern-day Ukraine, which is part of the former USSR. Was he not Russian when you watched Rocky IV? That movie's only a little bit older than I am. Yeah. So, like, they've psyoped... Came out in 84, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they yeah. psyop up everyone. Wow. And you know, that's, a, that's a thing to remember. So Putin's long, boring history lesson, I think, was very, very important, because if Americans didn't sit there and drool through it, saying, oh, Putin's a bad guy, then wait for him to I watched it, like, twice. It was very yeah. entertaining. I interesting. That, I think that, that it, it, it gives a very good explanation of, of to what the region is. And I have lots of Ukrainian friends, lots. And I was the man on the border helping all the Ukrainian refugees yes. come over. And lots of refugees. I remember that. And lots of Ukrainians share the sentiments of the Russian people. Think, why the fuck was NATO involved in our country? Why the fuck did we overthrow the government and give the people no Russian representation within their own parliament? Why the fuck were ethnic Russians attacked by the Ukrainian government in 2014 for years before the, the Russians came in? Yeah. So a lot of Ukrainians share my sentiments and i know some of you don't and i'm not trying to offend you because i have nothing but respect to the young brave ukrainian men who are uh, the ones who volunteer at least going out and marching off to war but you're all gonna fucking die for nothing and it's sad and it actually breaks you made a good point the money can't save you the money can't save you money and people then this is the american delusion send them more money send them more money Zelensky send them more money is taking if, it. eventually even if Zelensky isn't taking it let's say they're giving every soldier a very expensive gun they're just going to die with expensive guns in their hands and that doesn't console the families and that doesn't console the mothers who lose their sons and the children who lose their That's fathers sick. it consoles fucking nobody and you'll get to a point where there are no more men left to fight dollar bills can't fire weapons you need men on the ground at the end of the day and i think Ukrainians are actually getting sick of it. I think they're getting sick of it. They're trying to round them up, throw them in vans, send them off to the front. Better. My friend's stepfather was mobilized against his will. And it's really fucking And he's sad. how old? 50? Yeah. And I will say this also about this one. I have a couple of friends. They also... They, they they do not going out anymore because uh, if they catch them at supermarket or stuff they put them in a van and they send them to the war directly so they find directly themselves in the war that's what is going on right now yeah, it's 51 and it, and it's really fucking sad. War 51. so putin's interview was very important because he let the world know what's actually going on these are things that i've been i mean i have tweets going out way before the putin interview saying well the war started in 2014 it was a civil war between the ukrainians the russians stepped in i've said all this stuff and uh, i think Putin's interview was very important. Isn't it crazy how Americans, like, didn't know? They think the war started in 2022 or whatever it was. No. But they don't realize Just it actually started yeah, eight years before. Eight years before. Yeah. Eight years before. Tristan, why no. did he speak only Russian and not English? Why would he speak English? Why would he risk b making one mistake when he speaks perfect Russian? He does speak English, by the way. He speaks yeah. English. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, that he, speaks he speaks English. English he speaks yeah. German. He speaks a bunch of different languages. Yeah, he speaks German. I feel like Putin is uh, hes a very, very pragmatic man. He's a very deep thinker. He's a chess player. Um, judo black belt as well. Very intelligent man. I feel like he doesn't ever want to f be in a position where anyone can say he's been misunderstood. Mm -hmm. okay. I, th I think the only words he's ever said in English on camera were at the beginning of the Russian Winter Olympics where he says, welcome to Russia. I think that's the only words in English he's ever been caught saying on camera, but yeah. it's it's well known that he does speak perfect English. Yeah, he's former KGB. Yeah, but it's his language. You come to my country to speak to me about topics that involve me in my country. I'm going to speak to you in my language. It's a power move. Yeah. And, and, and good for him. And Putin's not perfect. No politician is perfect. However, Americans do need to understand the history of the region, and I liked the interview because he educated people as to the history of the most region. americans don't know yeah and in the mainstream media of course he says basic stuff oh i have no i have no interest in attacking poland and starting world war three i have no interest in invading lithuania and starting world war three why would i do that i'm not stupid that's crazy why would i try and start a war with nato that's going to go nuclear i'm not going to do that the bbc the next day putin clearly wants to invade the rest of the world after ukraine yeah because yeah. they're, they're trying to scare people into ponying up their tax dollars and voluntarily and willingly giving their money away to these young men who are just going to die with their expensive weapons if they get the money in the fucking first place and it's sad it's really really sad and it breaks my heart because it's one country over yeah and yeah. these these and We're right here yeah and i've got nothing against the ukrainian man or the ukrainian people nothing um you know it's it's interesting because uh you know i think at this point russia has something like 25 percent of uh, of ukraine mo mostly mostly eastern racial or yeah. well, ethnic russians anyway yes they took Crimea, the they Donbass. um do you foresee that they're going to continue to advance on, or they're going to probably just keep it as is and let Ukraine have the rest? I, I mean, they're willing to negotiate, but Zelensky doesn't want to fucking negotiate. They wanted negotiate. to negotiate. That's another thing, too. Putin wants my, to negotiate. He wants more money. My, my opinion on the situation is as follows. I believe 
what Vladimir Putin says, not what he said in the Tucker interview, actually, but what he says to, to his own state media, because I listened to a lot of what he says when he said, for eight years they were committing a genocide against ethnic Russians within Ukraine, and I jumped in to stop them. The fact that he didn't attack Kiev with full vigor, the fact that he didn't attack Lviv and these other cities with full vigor, the fact that he's not positioning himself to take the ukrainian areas where i guess the ukrainian language is the first language and there are no ethnic russians there the fact that he immediately took all the areas that are filled with ethnic russians fortified it and didn't seem to give a shit about moving any further i think he made a point of saying even that. though they could i think that they got hypersonic missile they got all the stuff that we got guys russia, in america russia could conquer ukraine yeah, yeah. Very they, easy. I've, i said if, it, like yeah. they could have done it in a day yeah they could have done what america does airstrikes for one or two days yeah. and but then again, but again that includes killing I remember lots of innocent Ukrainians and the Russian government I don't think sees Ukrainians as a different people he sees it as Russian people with a corrupt government yeah. he doesn't want to kill women and children of course Repil said before he passed so he said listen Putin could definitely decimate Ukraine and take it over 100% but his people are there the Russians yeah. are there yeah why Yeah, why, decim kill yeah, why decimate Ukraine and, yeah. he, and he looks at it because uh, you know obviously he was there before w with the former Soviet Union he looks at it like I don't want any Russian like he looks at it like we're all, all my Russians are separated in different parts of the world etc yeah. and I don't want them suffering anywhere which is yeah. why he stepped in with the Ukraine thing and then the NATO yeah. advancements to, so for all the Americans that always get confused like why did he invade blah 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 I always give the example of if China you know, started setting up in Mexico City. Yes. And started putting biological weapons there. Yes. And started coming closer and closer. And you had told, we had agreements with Mexico that they would never be able to be there and yeah. set up and everything else like that. And China was there. We would invade China within a day. Well, yeah. well, well let's, take, let's take a real world historical example that did in fact happen. In, in during the Cold War, I believe it was 1962, oh, no. 1962 or 1967, I can't remember exactly which year it was, I think 1962, uh, Russia said, well, Cuba's an independent country that can do anything it likes, it's a sovereign state. John so F. I'm Kennedy. Gonna, yeah, so I'm going to put some weapons in Cuba. And John F. Kennedy mobilized the entire American Navy to blockade Cuba, and the Russian ships, there was a standoff, they ended up leaving. But the Americans were ready to go to fucking war to stop the Russians Cuban encroaching, missile crisis, encro guys. Yeah, encroaching too close to their territory. It was called the Cuban Missile Crisis, you're completely correct. So when people say oh well ukraine's an independent state they should be allowed to have american weapons and missiles and bases next to russia and ukraine if they want they can join nato if they want cool well then cuba's an independent state in the 1960s we should let them fucking put nuclear warheads in cuba isn't that an independent country what fucking right do the americans have to tell the cubans to do anything so as a real world example of what america does when you encroach too close we'll to, to their territory Fidel castro hundreds of times exactly we tried to assassinate him we've tried all this shit we honey can pot, honey pots. yeah so uh and it just it just so yeah, as we as you can see, guys, we are really get getting educated here in this topic. I don't know much about it, but I'm getting uh, learning. I'm reading also some articles about it. I'm reading some his history about it. And so I just wanted to take this time to speak about the store, guys. Uh, make sure to check the store uh, as a support for us. Purchase something from there. I have cool design. If you want to see a design, you can send it to me. I will make it a design. Send it to you on Instagram. And make sure to purchase from the store, guys, as a support just hasn't worked so that's what america does under the same circumstances and if you think if russia hadn't pushed the, to the american navy and tried to get to cuba there wouldn't have been hot war there absolutely would have been because that's the nature the defensive nature of any country that wishes to live in peace take it a step further can't, um the intelligence community wanted to set up attacks fake attacks by the way in the united states and say that it was false flags say it was cuban, cuban extremists separatists. separatists that were committing these attacks to get them to go to war with cuba yeah, yeah. for the military industrial complex like guys money. we've we've like uh, and this is a reason why and kenny didn't want to do this shit. big reason why he got killed whole yeah. other conversation oh that was a lone madman who lived in russia before don't oh worry. yeah Harry no, it, Oswald. Wasn't, it wasn't the cia yeah. hmm. oh uh, man speaking of uh politics and what's going on in the world top chase says good evening gentlemen i wanted to get your thoughts on based on elon visit to them boys visiting the holocaust locations with ben Dick it seems like they're slowly oh, laying him sure. in on that ferris wheel yeah um my opinion on elon musk is this and i will be it's very hard when someone does so much for humanity and so much for free speech and so much for elon's allowed to have his opinions this is the, this is the, this is the fact and i'm going to say it there are a lot of people who are bums who have nothing who have never built a business who've never been half as smart as elon who've never done anything as impressive and never will i'll probably never do anything as impressive as elon musk and there's a lot of people who want to criticize him i understand that twitter still has a level of censorship i think his whole point when he bought the platform is i want the 10 percent of the craziest people on the right and 10% of the craziest people on the left both to be upset that's what he said and that is how it is 
the lefty Stephen King's having fucking meltdowns, and one on the left's having meltdowns about Elon running Twitter. And yes, there are now some people on the right saying, oh, the harder right stuff is being censored, and we're mad. So he actually fulfilled his mission objective, one. Two, Elon Musk is allowed to have his own opinions, which may differ from mine, and may differ from yours, and may differ from yours. Yep. I've never met Elon Musk. I've never even spoken to Elon Musk. The fact that I was completely banned from putting any public opinion out on any social network, and now I'm on X typing whatever I like to millions of people without risk of being banned, and the fact that he's blessed me back with my account, I, you think I'm going to sit and say, well, Elon disagrees with me on this and that. I probably disagree with Elon on 25, 30% of issues. Yeah. So he lets me talk, and he fulfilled his mission statement of having the 10% on the right and the 10% on the left super pissed off at the fact that he runs the platform. Yeah. So yes, lots of the right-wingers are saying, oh, he banned this account, and lots of the left-wingers are like, they let hate preachers like Andrew Tate on X. He fulfilled his mission statement, you know? And the fact that Twitter was an arm of the United States left-wing government that allowed literally zero people with any valid opinions to ever write there ever before yeah, he Twitter took it over, be super yeah. I'm like, well, maybe just try to stay within the guidelines and appreciate the platform for what it is now because it is massively improved yeah so you've I'm, been on it for what the better part of a decade right you've been on it you've seen yeah. it the, and uh, I've, I've lost five or six accounts yeah. and my original account was gifted back to me so I, and alex jones is there yeah alex and jones is back people who elon doesn't even like yeah he's yeah. let he's let on there yeah so see now yeah. i like elon musk the only issue i have with elon is that twitter slash x is i think a harvesting platform mm -hmm. well, let me explain when i say harvesting i mean you can give your thoughts, give your ideals, 100%, but why? I think it's like he's collecting data on each person, and unfortunately, you know, he's playing the game correctly. Israel, you know, shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> They're all about data. So I don't know why he went over there, but I'm just going to assume from what I've seen so far that, hey, man, it's data. So if you need to sell data to them, you never know. Well, no, here's the thing. One, 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 what you said about Twitter being a data farming company is completely correct. Let's name Elon's other companies. Mm -hmm. What kind of company is Tesla? A car company? Yep. Every yeah. single Tesla is programmed with a computer and has self-driving and every single crash and every single traffic maneuver and every single overtake and every single thing everyone has done all across the world in these Tesla cars is being mined and the data is being collected. Mm. The data is being collected and is going into building new technologies like the self-driving technology, which is eventually going to take over motor cars. Yeah. Um, SpaceX, all the different satellites in the world monitoring everything from the weather to the communications of the entire world. Again, it's data mining. And what Elon has built are massive data mining mining companies through cars through space rockets through satellites and when elon says something like i'm going to launch a new ai x ai you can bet your fucking bottom dollar it's going to be one of the best ais in the world so yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with harvesting the data if it's used in a productive way and i'm going to see what kind of product x ai is but i would absolutely advise anyone to invest in the project right now before he fucking goes public with it because it's going to be killer because yes. he is the data harvesting master of the world well, now, social media apps yeah. already do and it the fact that He's, stealing your yeah. data. And the fact that he's harvesting my data and using it to build AI companies to do some of the thinking and take the heavy burden off the brains of the world, I think is a lot more noble than harvesting my data and fucking selling it to advertising companies. Can like, we? Like other people do. Like so, what's, what, so I don't see the big hold issue. On. Everyone's like, oh, well, he's mining our data. Yeah, cool. But hold on. Cool. What's he going to do with it? Can I think he has noble intentions. Can we agree that a man of that power and stature can't be left alone to his own devices? So on some level, he has to be controlled by somebody. And in default, he have a good intention, but overall, you know, at that level, governments, people of power, want to control you. Yes, absolutely. People, people with power will always try to control people like Elon Musk. Yes, and I think he's doing. I think he's doing a very good job. I might add, he's created the first chip to put into your brain for what control. So I think he's doing I mean, great things. But like my thing is like, on what level do you say? You know what? Too far is is, is too far. Too far is too far. I don't know. Crazy. That's a very interesting question. That's a very interesting question, and like Putin said, Elon Musk is going to do what Elon Musk does, and there's nobody in the world who's going to stop him. I don't believe me, who, by the way, I can't send rockets to space, and I can't build self-driving cars, and I also can't put chips in people's brains to let them compu uh, control computers remotely if they're disabled. I can't do these things, and I'm not going to ever say who should be doing these things and who shouldn't mm -hmm. until I see an actual danger to mankind, and I don't think anything Elon is doing is endangering mankind. With every technological advancement in the world, every single one, whether it be nuclear energy or the or or inventing s s iron, for example, ooh, don't don't move into the Iron Age. Someone might, might make swords and stab someone with them. You know, with every single technological advancement in 
human history it can be used for good and it can be used for evil and i don't believe elon is an evil man because i believe elon is a pro-humanist i believe that elon wants the propagation and the success of the human species above everything else mm -hmm. now you give me a warmonger you you give me these people who want wars to happen in, com in countries and work for the raytheons and the lockheed martins of the world and like Nikki Haley. yeah and thank S fuck that these people who by the way are rich enough to buy twitter mm -hmm. don't own the fucking platform yeah let's just put it that way yeah. i believe that elon is a good-hearted man and he might disagree with me on some shit but i type points of view that elon would disagree with on elon's platform and he lets me say him yeah so what the fuck beef would i ever have with elon musk I, I, I think he's a great guy oppenheimer the guy that created the atomic know, bomb yeah bomb, oppenheimer yeah he's yeah. a great person however what happened to his creation they took it like you said before he's yeah. a user for evil so i don't think elon's a bad person i just think that his influence and his actual creations can be used for really bad stuff uh yeah well yes it absolutely can yeah. and all the fathers yeah. of nuclear physics and all the uh, fathers of theoretical physics from einstein to oppenheimer cool yeah fine hiroshima nagasaki two different explosions how many nuclear power plants are fueling the world in a very clean way right now a lot because of the work yeah. these men do again it can be used for good and it can be used for evil but what you can't do is you can't take your foot off the gas of human advancement because somebody might do something bad. It's an inherent risk that so, comes with the exactly, technology, yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, Louis Pasteur, the, the, the Frenchman who developed germ theory, uh, I mean, when he developed his technology, the, the first inventions coming out of it were things like canned food, pasteurization, milk that lasts from, for weeks and weeks instead of going off very fast. You know, very, very noble intentions. And then a lot of biological warfare, a lot of biological weapons yeah. stemmed from we're his made. original research and yeah. were made. So who, who gets their hand on technology and who controls the patents? I like Elon controlling the patents because regardless of what his political views may be, Elon would not kill people for money. Elon isn't the kind of guy who wants people dead so he can make more money. He doesn't give a shit about that. He's a pro-humanist, so I like him. All right, that's, yeah. that's as simple as that. I'm glad he's doing it. Yeah. I'm glad he's the one harvesting everyone's data and not someone who works for Raytheon. Could be worse, yeah. Yeah. Could be worse. And, and I will say, like, you know, um, what he's done with X's has been good, man. I mean, like, uh, the fact that he brought people on, like Alex Jones, who banned everywhere. Yeah. And he doesn't even like Alex Jones, because yeah. Alex Jones talked a bunch of shit about it. Yeah, yeah. But still, he lets him talk. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, the, you know that that's why I got respect for guys like him and Nick and um, Chris. well, shout out to Nick as well. Yeah. Uh, we need a free Nick on X, uh, but uh, like uh, like Chris, who you know I disagree with Chris on a bunch of stuff, but he's like, you know what, I might not agree with you, Myron, on certain topics, etc. However. Your ability to have your take on these topics is important. So yeah. boom, you but know people what I mean? say that people say that to me. What if you get banned on Rumble? I'm like. He ain't fucking banning me on Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Like what? He's a he's a he's a free speech absolute. For real. Yeah, he's a For free real. speech absolute. He, he disagrees with a lot of stuff yeah. that we say, but he's still like, you know what? I don't have to agree with it, but I will defend your yeah. right to say it, which is fucking extremely yeah. and, noble. And the fact that Rumble is utilized by people like us, keep in mind, if a super far left LGBTQ person who thinks gender transitions are a necessity for every man in the world was on Rumble, he, he'd be on Rumble too. He wouldn't get banned either. Yeah, he wouldn't get banned. It's just we, the people like us use Rumble, so they see it as some right-wing talking platform, but it isn't. It's actually a complete free speech platform. And not only that, but like um, Elon said something very interesting when he took over X. He said um, <laughs> he said that the conservative creators were being censored at a rate something crazy like yeah. 40, 20 or 30 times more than the liberal creators yeah. which I thought was fucking wild yeah. so you know do lib liberal creators get censored yes they do but not to the same degree as conservatives what so fucking ever yeah. So yeah. you'll see crazy Thanks. people on YouTube speaking fine. of rumble support us support rumble yes. Yeah. as Se creators 1775 coffee Get in there, ninjas. Best coffee in the world. I drank all of it, by the way. If you yeah, send really me a, if you send me a I picture of yourself drinking this coffee, I will retweet some of you. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Some of you, not all of you, because you I know this stuff is going to sell out, and it's fucking good as well. It's really good, actually. I'm a coffee addict, and it's very good. Yeah, man. Just get some coffee. Support the mission. Instead of getting Folgers, get the fucking 1770 exactly. coffee. Guys. Support, support free speech. Support Rumble, Rumble. Support free speech. You all drink coffee anyway, so you know. make sure the money's going to the good people. It's going up in the stock market, too. I've been, I've been buying some. Yeah. No, it's going up. Rumble stock? Yeah, it's been going up. Of course I'm not buying any. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, shit. D d we got first year. Last shots here. Go ahead. Uh, Diglett says, Tristan, Big G, always a pleasure to be seeing you on the podcast. Chat loves you. Thanks for all the gems. There you go. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you're listening. Tristan, this is my last question for you. Um, and then, Myron, you can take it from here. Yeah. If you can go back, maybe to when you were like 
18, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Would you change anything now? And what advice to young men watching here would you say to them to be successful? Hmm. Life is, everyone actually knows these rules because they use them in very different aspects of life. Mm. There are people who will play Call of Duty competitively and they know that being online more than anyone else and playing in all the games and showing up at all the tournaments and trying their best will get them the best Call of Duty score or character or whatever it is. I don't know how Call of Duty works anymore. It's been a long time since I played that shit. But everyone knows the rules to the game. Yeah. In fact, my friend Marcel's podcast is called Rules to the Game. You should subscribe to that, by the way, while you're at it. Awesome. But, but, yeah, but everyone knows the rules to the game already. Everybody knows that if you wake up and you're lazy and you sit around on your phone, you scroll on TikTok for four or five hours, you go to work at your normal job, you work your shift when there's nothing wrong with hard work and there's, there's, there's nobility in, in working any job, and then you go home and you do nothing and you watch TV, you know you're not going to make it. It's not actually something that I need to tell anybody. So true, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like when people, and they do this to me on, on Super Chats all the time, and they do this to Andrew sp specifically because Andrew is a more accomplished fighter than me. They're like, hey, Andrew, give me some advice on how to be a good kickboxer. What the fuck are you asking people on Rumble for? <laughs> is there a gym? near your house why aren't you there right now why weren't you there yesterday everyone already knows the answers and they search unfortunately um for for cheat codes mm. for magic words that i'm going to tell you that are going to make you rich you have to outcompete everybody else because there are only so many although dollars can be printed in an unlimited amount there's only so much wealth in the world there are only so many lamborghinis that are built every year there are only so many mansions in every single country there are only so many private jets and so many beautiful women and so much gasoline and fuel and food and caviar and all the crap that everyone wants and there's only so much gold and so many Patex and so many rolexes that are made if everyone wants the same shit you have to outcompete other people to get the things that you want yes and regardless of what you may think about me or andrew i hear a bunch of say oh well, they just talk crap online you know us i am glued to my laptop and phone all fucking day all i do is work and all andrew does is work mm -hmm. so the fact that we we have shown such amazing results coming from where we come from coming from isn't a fucking secret yeah there's no magic spell there's no hocus pocus i go back to my younger self and i'd say yeah keep it up because you're definitely going to make it because that young guy who was broke is now me so he doesn't need any advice, you know? Yeah, what, what, what he said here exactly, like, um, I don't understand why people still uh, messaging him. Like, uh, it's just like for me, uh, it's like uh, they are too much invisible. They, they like to be visible that they pay that 100 uh, euro to send it to you in a chat and just for you to respond to them. Like, for example, I don't know how to like he said uh, how I become rich it's, I don't understand that this is kind of type of question because how to become rich is just you there is a lot of people who are rich and you may you can subscribe to their channel you can subscribe to to their platform that they're teaching you you can subscribe here and here and here and learn something from them and then because they already did the road, you know, they already did the road that you trying to do to become rich. So they already did it. So if they, what they're going to teach you is they're going to teach you the same road that they did to be rich. So the, the point of asking them, like, you're just trying to be visible, not because you see that yourself that you are invisible and nobody see you. So that's why you try to text them to see yourself that visible and they reply to your question and you just get hyped up like oh yeah you know Tristan just replied to my question and stuff like this but it's, that's not necessary bro you can still listen to their podcast but not them for me I would not I would not put I don't know what I'm saying like I will not ask him any question like because we all know how to get rich we all know how to get uh, uh, jacked it's like how can I like I uh, like I, I watch a video of uh, Aiden Ross with um, Andrew and he says how can I get a six pack quick? I I tried like I've been I've been playing football for almost a decade now I don't know how much how many how many years I've been playing football almost a decade, and I've been training, you know, and abs doesn't come it doesn't uh, come easily you know it's really hard to get abs and they go easily that's the crazy part where they come f uh, hard and they go easily if you don't train and stuff like this, so that I'm saying how can you get a, a six pack quick it's impossible. It's just impossible. So everyone knows the core, the answer of how to gain abs, but they just ask question: How I I earn it? How you how I gain it? Uh, I don't know why they ask the question.
And just because I knew I had to stay on the grind. And, and you know, I always like to remind people of this because, you know, you guys have had a meteoric rise uh, over the past two years. And people don't know your guy, that you guys, number one, you guys were very well off before the fame. You guys were already making millions. Yeah. You guys didn't need to do the YouTube and everything else like that. You guys kind of did it on the side for fun and you blew up because you guys are so charismatic and talented. Um, and you guys cared a lot. And, and well. you guys care actually genuinely care about getting men to become better. And you guys, you know, people try to, uh, to criticize you guys. Well, these guys were in the sex industry and they were, you know, having guys give their life savings or whatever. And I'm like, yo, look, you know, people are going to indulge in this shit anyway. Yeah. And... Well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll defend myself on that point. Yeah, go ahead, please. Give me a second. It's very weird. I, I feel like it's just an angle of attack people want to use. Because one, I was not in the porn industry. Mm -hmm. No business or company I ever facilitated ever had people having actual physical sex with each other. Mm -hmm. I ran a streaming company. Mm -hmm. Now, how many streaming companies exist today in this world? Uh, they're all poorer than me, and they're not famous, so you don't know who they are. But every single girl on OnlyFans, every single Twitch streamer, every single webcam model, kick streamers, even, even Rumble and YouTube, there are agencies that take care of this stuff to make sure and guarantee the success of content creators. Yes. Now, how many companies are there like this? In Bucharest, there's four or five hundred at least. Yeah. Worldwide, tens of thousands. And these people haven't become as successful as me and Andrew, so you don't know who they Big are. Big webcaming industry yeah. here in, in yeah. uh, Romania. So you know, and and well, you guys are from fucking Miami. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many OnlyFans agencies are in Miami? Are you going to oh, call man. all them human traffickers and bad people? Yeah. Now, they may be. Some of them may, might be bad people, but here's my point. With every other industry in the world, actually, no, it's not the industry. It's me. It's the fact that it's me, and it's the fact that it's Andrew. Because let me tell you something. There are people who have been in prison for robbery. There's a good YouTube channel. Um, it's called the Fresh Out Series with Big Herc 916. That guy did 10 years in jail for bank robbery. Shout out Big Herc. Yeah, shout out Big Herc. He's awesome. Shout out to you, bro. And Big Herc is on the, on the YouTube saying, look, don't do fucking crimes. Don't do bank robbery. Don't go to jail. It's shit. But here's what I learned. And he gets a lot of applause and a lot of praise, and he deserves it. There are ex-Crips, ex-Bloods, ex-gang members, ex uh, you know, who, who will go to schools and say, I used to be a Blood. I used to be a Crip. I'm going to stop it just here, guys. I'm not going to do, do it more because I'm getting a little bit tired. And I need to go to the shop anyway. <laughs> it's going to close. So... Yeah, guys, that was the reaction of Tristan Fresh and Fit. I told you this. I I, I prefer Tristan. No, but this one, this this interview was much fun to me because uh, I'm already familiar with the, the the message that Andrew have. I'm already familiar with, and I don't want to um, hear it all the time. That sometimes I take only point and blah, blah, like a little bit like point what he's saying and stuff like this. Uh, and this one was really informative. It's uh, much more news that I am gaining, not outside of what he speak about the Matrix. It's more, but uh, he spoke about history, he spoke about fashion, he spoke about women. Even though, and yeah, it was much more inform uh, much more information for me. Anyway, I get much more. So thank you guys for sticking us. Yeah, watching the reaction. I hope you enjoyed the first part. I hope you're gonna enjoy the second part. I hope you enjoy it too. And make sure to check the store, guys, to purchase any design from there. I have a really cool design. I'm going to drop the video to show you what we have in the store. And in the same time, buy some, enter to the store and purchase something from there as a support for us. And I will post this every day. I will post every day a reaction until I gain my first million. And then I will do it after one. When I gain million, my first million, I will... Uh, I will I will uh, I will do it one week and oh, suggesting gonna be much uh, anyway. Well, when you go on the road, you're gonna have better equipment. For now, I'm just having an iPhone, so I have no complaint. Anyway, I'm doing it. So thank you guys. See you for next reaction.